Hello and welcome to Future Commerce, the podcast at the intersection of culture and commerce. I'm Philip. I'm Brian. Big show for you here today. You're going to cover a whole Ooh. lot of things. Uh, we are not going to hallucinate uh, on our way to creating the best <laughs> podcast in e-commerce, but you know who is hallucinating, Brian? It's AI. AI, AI is, is hallucinating. hallucinating and it's, and it's making all of us, it's, it's misinforming the world. Did you know? This is a new this is a new piece of information. Did you know that you can melt an egg? Oh, can you? <laughs> you can. Have you heard about according egg to melting machines? <laughs> a recent search, uh, according to a recent search, you uh, Google has been misinformed by Quora, uh, the online community that answers questions, posts questions and answers them. Uh, that uh, community has an, an unbelievably authoritative uh, voice as far as it's concerned, as far as Google's uh, search rank and algorithm is concerned. And uh, apparently, Quora has been caught out uh, recently on identifying long tail searches and having chat GPT or open AI's GPT for product provide authoritative results that are generative AI based and not based on human responses. And this is creating problems for long tail search phrases like, can you melt an egg, which uh, a, a recent story that made the rounds showed uh, a Google search that has since been corrected that uh, Google is, uh, you know, serving up this content with its native content feature. It is interesting. I mean, Core has long ranked well in Google searches. It's and mm. uh, it's it's interesting because Google just made a big update to how they rank things, right? So yeah, help, the helpful, the helpful content. content update. Yeah, yeah. and so. Um, Philip, you are excited because it uh, it's helped us a little bit. Um, yeah. Based on the type of content that we create, uh, this this update's really meaningful. And I think the goal of the update is maybe to make sure that it's like there isn't a bunch of generic AI like summaries that are taking over all of our content um, and results, uh, especially when you can go ask and AI directly about some of that stuff if you want it. Um, mm -hmm. what, what, like, I think this really begs the question, like, what is important to catalog now that we have chat, chat GPT? Like, if we can just go ask an LLM a question to something and get it, like, probably a more reliable answer than we would potentially Googling it, um, and just go direct to the LLM, what's, like, what, what is, how does that change Google's role in what they catalog and why they catalog it and why they rank it. Well, um, that is the that is I think the systemic risk and probably the biggest thing that could be uh, disruptive to Google's bu uh, business model around search in the next decade. I know Google feels that way. That's why they're competing so furiously with Bard. Uh, I know the FTC feels that way because they are. <laughs> uh, they're going after uh, Google now um, or Google's. It's funny uh, that this is finally the moment that they're going after Google. But well, I, I, you know, I think that, well, you know, they're, they're, they're actually suing Amazon. Uh, the, yes. the investigation of Google's monopolization of search is a longstanding uh, conversation. I think the, let's look around the next corner, right, Brian? Um, wouldn't it be nice if we had like a little piece of music that was like, <laughs> <laughs> future casting with Brian and Philip. Yeah. Um, we need some. We need some harmony to that. <laughs> yeah, we need some. Harmony. This is like the thing we're going to do at the top of every show. Now. Yeah. Um, and a new segment called Future Casting on Future <laughs> Commerce. If you were to think about this, uh, a couple things that we have talked about for years now. Uh, who is Google competing with in this new LLM future? While well, Meta has made a really big uh, push and a big bet on open source. So if there is an appetite for the future of search being open source, then that means that the future of human knowledge is this idea of intelligence and uh, probability-based models, like large language models that just generate predictive output. That's something that can be reduced and has already been reduced to about a terabyte in size. And if you think about the density of storage, maybe all of human knowledge can sit at the edge on your phone and not need to talk to the internet or need a giant 
you know, supercomputer to calculate it for you at some future state. So maybe there is like this idea that we need to continue to constantly index the internet yep. and, and have increasingly less relevant results because it continues to index AI generated content, not human generated content. Maybe there is a future where that becomes less of a problem because we don't need to do as much indexing anymore for most of the types of search activity you'd be looking for. So, so maybe wild. that's how we, yeah, maybe that's how we, maybe that's how the future shapes up. There's an, another possibility too, you know, the helpful content uh, update, like you said, uh, it changes the playing field for a lot of people who've made big investments in SEO over the years. Um, a lot of people said that TikTok was going to be the disruptive force. You remember that discourse a year ago? Mm -hmm. Oh, TikTok is going to take down Google. Why do people go search for things on Google when you could have a human tell you on TikTok? Well, there's a story we just uh, put out about a, you know, a new uh, AI generated uh, deep fake where influencers in China are unbelievably un like convincing to be selling items on a live stream that is perpetual and never ending because they're not actually human. Right. And that idea of the distrust of the person who's creating content that's selling things to you is something that could also disrupt uh, this like authoritative idea of a human selling things to you from TikTok. So a lot of the think pieces, I think, in the last ye year have become kind of moot in, in the way that these updates are, are changing how people are investing. That's I think that's I a really it. good point. Distrust is one of the biggest issues right now. And it's sort of the next generations, it's native to distrust something. Uh, you know, even I saw even, even the current generation, like uh, Michael Miraflor, a friend of Future Commerce, he was saying, I can't tell if this is, re you know, real real fake or fake real onto one of those yeah. potentially AI generated videos. Who knows? It's, it, it's, it's weird. The style of, of videos, things that seem fake, maybe aren't fake and things that are fake, maybe are it's it, the world's so wild. It's hard to have hmm. like a, a, a filter that you can trust. That's your own filter now. Let's talk about that because yeah. the that I think that that's a really interesting dynamic. Um, and, well, your guard me, might just, be up in certain yeah, arenas, right? And, and it's interesting. I do wonder if there's a little bit of a generational thing going on here with technology because boomers had a really boomers and and, and older generations had a really hard time. If you remember back in the day, what your grandma used to forward you, right? Like that was sort of the the thing. It was like. <laughs> Oh, watch out for this. What I still get like in, a, gr in, in group text. Yes. Right. Right. Yeah. Right. So it was really hard for, for like some, some generations to absorb this information and understand what was real, have that kind of filter that, that, that was innate in them. Whereas we look at those things and we're like, oh yeah, that's obviously fake. Like that's clearly not verified information. I wonder if they're like humans will be able to adapt to this new style of thing, you know, things happening. Some people already are. I've seen people be like, yeah, I can tell. I can usually tell when something's AI generated. I don't know if I believe them, but. Well, let's, yeah. okay. Let's use, rather than just pontificate about what might have happened, let's look backwards mm -hmm. and see how something from our recent past might inform the way that we look at our, our, our you know, near future. Here's a good example. Have you ever used the phrase, that didn't hold up, right? Yeah, yeah of course. So for, yeah. for instance, I, I watched, uh, you know, my kids are 11 and 12. The last few years, we've been watching a lot of movies from my childhood, okay? I've been watching lots of movies, Brian. Jurassic Park holds up. Pretty well. It holds up. It, it's still really good. Uh, for whatever reason, The Matrix Reloaded does not hold up. Well, it does not it, hold up. Did reload? Well, I, I would those argue movies the, are the 10, 11 was... years apart. Listen, I forget the narrative, forget, forget the story, forget the acting. <laughs> the things matrix that were up. things that were genuine, things that were genuinely impressive from a VFX perspective. Yeah. That blew your mind when you first saw it. I watched that like million man brawl scene, like the epic scene in matrix reloaded. I must've watched that. QuickTime file that I torrented 
<laughs> a f- like 40,000 times. And today, it looks like a bunch of like rubber, you know, bad VFX. So I, I think that we we do develop an eye for these things in the long run, but we're fooled in the present. So here's a here's an interesting thing. Uh, I think your generational divide uh, insight is really important because uh, what I where I think that it matters, okay, or where where I where I think commerce comes into this story is we are primed to be skeptical right now at this moment. We are primed to be skeptical and to notice and to look for disinformation in areas of politics, right? In areas of religion, right? Maybe even celebrity news, things that are sensationalized Mm -hmm. or weaponized to make you think a certain way or feel a certain thing, okay? Where we are not prepared for it is in the area of commerce where right. you are you are not prepared for disinformation. You are more likely to be persuaded. Your guard is down in this realm of, you know, deep fakes, v- VFX, fake out of home. All of these campaigns are very easily mistaken to be real because you would never believe that Jacquemus would fake handbags driving around Paris. Right. Because that's not even a thing that you would ever consider is possible or would ever be done in that arena. But a right. Trump deep fake, you'd be like, maybe that's not real. Right. Totally. Yeah. I think that's a really good point. The things that seem like they, that are often sensationalized, that are polarizing, you are less likely to believe. Whereas things that are like come from a brand or come from a, yeah, that mm-hmm. I think that's a really astute point. Um, the, the the fake out of home thing is is super interesting as well because as a trend are people actually like people don't even care if it's real or not if it's an idea that someone's able to pull yeah. off it's actually it's almost just as fun it's that exciting it's not on its real. own uh, well, yeah because yeah, it's, it's viral yeah. on its own and just for those who don't have uh, the background uh the term fake out of home uh you could go back and listen to an episode that we did i think called blimp commerce uh where we talked a lot about fake out of home fake out of home is a, a term that describes uh 3d vfx work that shows a large scale out sometimes outdoor brand activation that's not actually real uh, for instance, uh, Netflix uh, had a, if I recall correctly, for one of their series, they had a condom unfurling on a, like, I don't know, the Eiffel Tower or something like that. That's something that just they never would have done. It was on uh, an obelisk, I think. Oh, sorry. It, yeah. was, it was an obelisk. <laughs> uh, whatever is also phallic um, in the world. <laughs> <laughs> they, uh, I, I mentioned the the handbag example. You know, there's lots of brands that are doing this now because VFX work is done quickly, cheaply. Um, and with stunningly, like, it's like very surprisingly Do you realistic know results. Interesting. Yeah. Like doing that really, really well, though, is actually kind of expensive. And so some people are actually pulling off some of these stunts in real life because it's it might be actually easier to execute the real life thing than to do it. Yeah, the, so the Mark well. Jacobs coat, <laughs> yeah. the, the inflatable, yeah, yeah, yeah. right? Uh-huh. It's, inf- it's informing real life, right? Yeah, right. For sure. Yeah. Yeah. Really interesting stuff uh, that's happening. That's that's woven a lot of things together. Uh, I, I definitely want to touch on uh, another topic. We'll get to it in just a little bit because I have a lot to say about spatial commerce, spatial computing, and um, some AR stuff because uh, there's some news out pretty soon. But Brian, I have a quiz for you. Okay. Some trivia. This- okay. Uh, here's a piece of trivia for you. you fam- you're familiar with Star Wars. Uh, I mean, yeah. Obviously. Yeah. <laughs> uh, you, you know, the... There's Star Wars uh, generally has like some tropes, one of which is like a cantina scene, right? Yeah, like a lot of Star Wars have a cantina scene. Yeah, there's like a cantina, a cantina scene, and there's usually a band that's playing music in the yeah. cantina. For Star um, Wars, that's like, that's probably some of the best music to come out of Star Wars. Just kidding, just kidding. <laughs> that music, so, and you could probably sing it, right? Do you know, do you know how yeah, the tune goes? Yeah, Go mm-hmm. for it. Just give me yeah, a little like, bit of it. Do 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 something like that. Yep, yep, it's like that exactly. Um, Did you know that that music has a name? 
I think I did know that. I used to really, really like the Star Wars soundtrack. Uh, and so back when I was a kid, I would rent it from the library on CD uh, and listen to it. <laughs> really? So, yeah, I, I like I, I looked at all the track names. I thought it was awesome. John Williams, big fan. There's a um, uh, so uh, apparently uh, Disney is quietly removing uh, this music from its Star Wars continuity, uh, little by little, uh, there's a, a news story over on Boing Boing. Um, the name of this style of music, believe it or not, Brian is called jizz. <laughs> um, and no, so, uh, <laughs> this article over on Boing Boing, Diz, uh, Disney is, is quietly removing jizz from the Star Wars continuity. Um, you're Did a big fan of jizz. Banned? It sounds <laughs> like so. apparently, apparently so. <laughs> Uh, You're, um, you would, did, you would, you would go to the library and go home just to be entertained by jizz. It sounds like I would rent a CD and bring it home. Where are we headed with this? Is this even real? This is real. <laughs> this is a real story. This Brian. Is real. Did this get them banned? This is culture and commerce on, have you on t- TikTok. Is this where you're headed? TikTok commerce. They like tried to go sell the CD. <laughs> They tried to go sell the CD that was a the, Star the, the Wars. The updated terms but they, of service said they're not allowed to sell jizz yeah, on TikTok they, commerce. They, exactly. TikTok shops, no, yep. you can no longer. This is it. True story. You can't sell jizz on TikTok. <laughs> not allowed. Whew. Wow. This is okay. real. This I is, love this jizz. This is for real. <laughs> I grew up with jizz in my Star Wars, and I'm I'm personally very, very upset. I feel like yeah. Is this so? It, wait, hold on. Why are they removing it? Is it just because of the name? I or? I don't know. So they're they're also renaming it. So uh, canonically, they're renaming it to Jats, that which doesn't have the same sort of impact. Jats honestly. feels safer. It feels like a safer choice. It doesn't feel as good as Jizz. <laughs> I'm being honest. That's just me. <laughs> um, I don't know. Yeah. So they're de-jizzing the Star Wars universe. It's really sad. Um, I but can't why? imagine. But why? Tell me. Tell they're me what not saying there... why. They don't know why. Do you know what this is? You know, it's really funny. Um, I love this. Uh, there is a story that I didn't know existed, but uh, the uh, you may have heard of Max Rebo. Max Rebo is a Star Wars character. Um, uh, but the do you know the name of the band that played in that Star Wars? Uh, that first Star Wars cantina scene. I do not uh, which, know the name Which included of the, the star Max Rebo. It's uh, Ivar Orbis and his galactic jizz whalers. <laughs> okay. You know, you know, it just to... to we're we're going to need that, we're gonna need some that, sort of like warning at the top of this. Probably. But I don't know why, because that's literally the name of what this That's literally is. what they call it. That's, wow. Do you know that band had... Probably some of my favorite aliens from all of Star Wars. That was that was like some of their most creative work. Iconic, iconic aliens who just wailed their jizz. Everybody loved it <laughs> when they did it. Oh, the, another one of the the guys in that band, Droopy McCool. I missed that. Droopy McCool. <laughs> this stuff was just right over kids' heads, so they could get away with it. It's like you know, all kids' movies have some sort of. I weird can't imagine Droopy in. without his jizz. It's so sad. <laughs> Okay. Uh, jats, I've done this. Now it's Jats. Droopy jats. with Jats. Droopy with no Jats. Droopy with Jats. I think they're actually removing um, the music altogether. Um, okay. Well, this is actually, uh, this gets back to one more thing, which is people are hoarding content that was like the originally created content because it is getting removed and pulled out and things are being edited and changed. And there's a whole, we've talked about this a lot, but it's just another example. I guarantee you there are a whole host of content hoarders right now that are making sure that, that they have the original star Wars. I I love that. I can't get you to say it. I need you to say it. (laughs) I've been trying so hard. My kids listen to the show, man. <laughs> oh, do they really? Uh, not anymore. They don't. Um, no, they don't. Yeah, they, they don't I think listen. there's a. I think there's a real problem. I think there's a real problem uh, with the, uh, the the nature of the digital media, <laughs> the, the digital media. I'm in, I'm I'm a boomer now. Uh, there's there's a real problem in being able to revise content over time, and you do you. It, it is stoking not just a nostalgia but a fear of the way. Uh, that you want to experience something being taken away from you and your ownership 
over that experience is also no longer yours. It's someone else's. You are just a licensee. And that is, you know, in the in the digital media, media streaming era, um, you just can't have your jizz on demand anymore. You have to store it in your closet um, physically. Yeah, yeah. You have to watch how you might lose it. <laughs> there is a dose of reality uh, that we all can experience right now, especially as uh, we don't have VR or AR um, being uh, as proliferated as it is at this moment. But take a mental picture, take a mental snapshot of the world as it is, because it might soon change. Uh, Meta just announced a partnership with Ray-Ban uh, or continuing their existing partnership with Ray-Ban to bring affordable uh, glasses to the world that puts uh, AI in your ear and live streaming in your field of view. Uh, it's a new uh, news story out uh, with a really svelte looking Mark Zuckerberg giving a presentation about their new uh, Ray-Ban uh, He was reinvigorated glasses. after Threads. Uh, it gave he really him was. Ego oh. boost. It was enough to... It was the jujitsu like... video. I think yeah. like post-smoking his meats, he, he really bulked up. When it looks uh, great. Elon backed out and and then Mark was like, yeah, he chickened out. And that's when he oh, was from like, the, oh, from the fight. Yeah, yeah the, he is. He's yeah. like, uh, yeah, uh, I guess I'll go on commercials now. <laughs> well, Mark is a much more natural actor than uh, one of his other billionaire cou counterparts. Uh, uh, Tim Apple. Tim <laughs> Apple. Oh, man. <laughs> Uh, oh, yeah. th there was a sustainability video that Apple put out where uh, Tim not looking too good. Um, he uh, very no unnatural in his well acting, in that, in not that, not very yeah. act, natural in his acting abilities. However, Mark Zuckerberg, man, I don't know. He's he's he may be. I don't know that guy. Uh, very charismatic. He's actually looking really good in in this pitch of this new glasses product. Can't wait to see what that's all about. I also, you know, maybe I'm going to start making T-shirts. Maybe. Maybe Future Commerce makes some T-shirts that say, I do not be consent to your live stream. Um, <laughs> if, yeah, if, if well, you are reading this, problem. That's, you agree uh, to a worldwide <laughs> uh, license for me to not appear in your live stream. If Something you come into my field of view, you, you uh, consent to being on my, on my live stream. <laughs> it's, it's wild, the world that we're about to live in. Um, However, I do think uh, this ties into other stories where we're very, very close to a future where AI powers a lot of human interaction uh, in real life. Uh, I walk around with AirPods in almost 100% of the time. Uh, we are, uh, there's a new story out this week about OpenAI uh, powering ChatGPT with new senses, including uh, the video, video uh, and image sense uh, recognition sense and being able to use video and images in uh, its chat context, and then also giving it a voice to be able to respond. And, and it can listen to voice commands where you can hold a natural conversation. This is in beta at the moment. We'll be rolling out slowly to uh, people over uh, the course of the year here uh, as we wind down in 2023. Brian. Yeah, I mean, combine that with the, the Zuck glasses. You, you start to get really things get really interesting because um you're you could be looking at something and then ask you know chat gpt like what's going on here um i mean think about how this is going to change so many industries uh everything yeah. from medical to to travel to whatever i mean travel travel guides and tours you're going to be able to walk up to to any building and and be like, give me the history of this building. Oh, tell me more. Oh, tell me about that person uh, that that this is named after, or who the architect was. It's it's all going to be right there, and you can you know you're going to be able to have a heads up display that sort of tells you about what happened. Or um, there's so many applications for this, and um, while you know this isn't necessarily an iPhone moment because I do think this is not going to be adopted sort of like the iPhone was um, as who was it was saying, was it uh, hip city rag who was saying like, this is not mm -hmm. a convergence moment. This is actually a divergent moment where all kinds of pieces of technology are going to be created or around 
ChatGPT we're looking at uh, was Johnny Ives coming back to. Yeah, uh, yeah. Johnny Ives is designing uh, or is part of a team that's designing a device for OpenAI. Yeah. So all kinds of interesting gadgets. Actually, one article I read was literally like, I think the people are using the word gadget, which actually for me <laughs> harkens right on back to Norbert Wiener. Um uh, because he, he talked about the, uh, sort of the, the gadget and gadget worship, uh, sort of the, the gadget, gadget worship. Yeah. It's going to take over, um, how we think about the world gadgets and machines and AI ultimately are going to t get rid of low level decision-making and hmm. judgment. So it's like, should I turn right? I turn left here. Like, AI is going to have a better answer than you are, right? Should I, should I use this wrench or this wrench? Well, I don't have to know that anymore. AI is just going to tell me. I love me. that those are the two use cases that you come up with. I, I just want it to remind me who that person's name is at that conference. Yeah. Every time I come into contact with them, because I can't be seen looking down at their badge. Uh, yes. That seems like an <laughs> obvious use case to me. There's also the a LinkedIn whisper as a, as a LinkedIn gadget. Remember Tony Hale's LinkedIn character gadget. on, yeah. Yeah. Well, on we talked about this on the podcast Veep. before. <laughs> yeah. That would have been a very long time ago, but that's what I want. I want my AirPod to be in. I want Tony Hale's voice to come in and be like, uh, that's Alex Greifeld from those best practices. Uh, she has a newsletter. You're subscribed to it. You like it a lot. That's what I want. I want, <laughs> I want that sort of thing. <laughs> I think you know? I didn't. I even one time I I totally I think I tricked you. I sent you the description of a business, and I, it was an idea that I had, and 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 you were like, "Is this real?" Like those butlers like, are us. Yeah, maybe. Uh, that's just <laughs> Duck Bill, by the way. Uh, Duck Bill, uh, Kirsten Green Investment. That's that's just launching. Actually, I just got an invite to it. It's like basically wow. a digital. Wow, a lot of non sequiturs <laughs> there. Uh, uh, come but, back, come back. But coming you, back, yeah. You faked me like out one time. Idea. It was like this idea of like a just an ai that would constantly be there to help keep you on track and it's back when we were talking about boundaries but it was like this idea of like an ai that was sort of like a constant life coach like helping you make decisions about yeah. what was financially smart for you like you go to make a, a purchase and it's like hey maybe that's not a good idea <laughs> bro Here's i what have that i yeah. hear that all the time i yeah. literally hear that all the time it's in my head already I don't need technology to give it to me. I make, I ignore that voice. <laughs> I already do yes. that. I ignore that voice all the time. He's like, you don't need that. Yes, I do. Bang. Here comes my credit card. You know <laughs> what drowns out that sound? <laughs> the cha-ching of the cash register. That's, <laughs> I don't need it. Commerce saves us from yeah. AI assistance. <laughs> I, let's, let's talk about a little bit about status and culture or, you know, there is a, uh, in a world where everybody, let's say that there is a, uh, you know, a divergence of uh, this technical technical capability, this technological capability, and access to it, which I don't know that that's actually what would happen because eventually everybody gets social media, eventually everybody has a smartphone. That's how the world actually works. But yep. let's follow that thread for a second. Let's say that there are haves and have-nots in technology, and the have-nots don't have this. Uh, I think we might get there with like therapeutics. We might get there with uh, gene therapies. Like there is yeah. a scary future where the Elysium <laughs> <laughs> happens. And, you know, we all have the magic gizmos that do a lot of things for us. And a lot of people don't. I, I think just like we have clown core and hobo chic and, <laughs> and cocaine, uh, uh, you know, the, the, the aesthetics of being somebody that doesn't need those sorts of things to have, the ability to have phenomenal memory, to have the ability to to be unassisted. The unassisted climb to Everest is still a flex. So I think right. that the th there is a world where it, you know, status and culture, especially around elements of commerce where you can afford to buy something or you can't afford service, quickly resolves itself either through competition, the free market, or through people finding it dramatically uncool to be assisted. Right. And just going on natural, they're going to raw dog every social scenario because that's. That may be flex. true. That may Bigger be true. Flex than but, AirPods, but I mean, if you think about Tony it, Hale. 
Tony Stark still had Jarvis. So like even the smartest people. That wasn't real, Brian. It wasn't real. Uh, but, They're going to de Tony Stark eventually too. <laughs> They're going to do it. My point gonna... in saying this is I think the smartest people will be like, look how much more I can do when I'm, when I have some sort of augment. But yes, I agree with you. They'll probably be a, like, <laughs> like I'm so cool. I don't need technology. Uh, and in fact, we already see that that's already happening all over the place. Uh, yeah. It, uh, but, flip but phones, let's, not let's, having a phone. There's all kinds of ways. Let's talk that, about that, yeah. Elysium yeah. for a second as well, because it, it's interesting. We're talking about divergent, tools and we're talking about right. ecosystems hollowing out of the middle right? class yep got it but is costco actually the real super app <laughs> we uh, almost made it through a whole episode we it did. was wild i we was did. so excited um there um there was a tweet recently uh from oh shoot now i'm forgetting who tweeted it i'll have to find it but it was about costco's recent introduction of of healthcare um, into their stack. And I actually think this is important to talk about because is, is, is it going to be technology ecosystems that become our super apps like X is trying to be um, and the, and the, and the gizmos that are built it's not around even in it. the conversation. It's not even in the cultural conversation, but yeah, Amazon is the super app because they right. have healthcare. They have, right. Right. Amazon, right. Or is it, is it commerce companies? Right. Amazon is perhaps, the Amazon's better, there already. You, you said Costco there. is some future thing. I mean, they do, they do hearing and vision already, right? So right, right, right. So it's interesting. Our retailers are are they the ones that are ultimately going to be the ones that need to release tools in, in this process or partner with tech companies to release tools for their distinct ecosystems. Now I'm like that's that's a that's I think that's a far future idea, but the ones that start to think about how to collaborate with technology companies to release bespoke ga gadgets <laughs> to assist with their ecosystems uh, might find the competitive edge. That's probably a five to ten year out thing, but I I, I really believe if you're really a far thinking leader in commerce right now you should be thinking about how these gadgets are going to roll out and what that means for your ecosystem okay i like that i also think there's a uh it's so funny like the the future never comes about the way that you think it will uh i do like renormalizing the word gadget i, I like that i like that i miss that gadgets were always like Technology used to be its own little, little weird subculture, and now everybody's, you know, now technologies and everything. Um, I do like this idea that there is a new style of technology or a new piece of something that's coming that, you know, gets some people really excited and, you know, people can nerd out over it. I love that. I kind of miss that in the world. Uh, the idea that that, like, I'll take the under on in, in this scenario and that the idea that the gadget is the thing that helps to enable because I know someone has to sell it to you. Don't get me wrong. Like, I understand that. I also understand there's probably some subscription component to this, right? We're going to have one more mm -hmm. thing to have to pay for in the world. Um, that's going to theoretically make our lives better and us more productive, more happy. I already pay $15 a month to open AI. Um, like there's likely a future where all of that's true. I also think that we've, we're at a point in our culture, and I know not everybody's at this point, but most everybody has to have multiple streams of income in order to be part of the middle class or to ascend, to have some class ascendancy. And there's never been a better time in the world for that to happen with the rise of remote work, on-demand work, uh, gig economy. Like uh, all of these things are kind of, they're all there already to some degree, just so many of them happen through your smartphone. Mm -hmm. So maybe the unbundling of the smartphone into more physical devices is what we start to see. Um, hey, Apple Vision Pro, I think will change everything. I really believe that. I'm starting to really believe that. Mm. I think it will change a lot of things. It'll change the nature of, uh, so it'll change the nature of some types of work, right? I think it'll change mm -hmm. the nature of remote work because yes. having physical hardware devices will be very different as an experience to 
uh, in 10 years than it is today. Uh, so the nature of remote work, the nature of work in the enterprise altogether, I think those things will have, will be uh, on an accelerated course. And that means that all the things that power that will inform that consumer, which to your point always starts with the, the knowledge worker, right? The, the, uh, it will begin there. I think, um, right. I will buy one the second it comes out. I might even buy one of these meta glasses. I don't know. Yeah. Um, the meta glasses do look interesting at least to try. I'm, I kind of want to experience like what I, don't know. I love it. Gadgets. Gadgets are coming back. Yeah. Gadgets are coming back. I could see this even in smaller B2B ecosystems that you're not like more course, niche yeah, ecosystems. Yeah, for sure. Like the, obviously. Yeah. Yep. Obviously, but the commerce implication is not just that you have to buy it. It's that they provide a new platform for, uh, uh, like customer shopping modality, mm -hmm. right? What is, what is the brand tie in when you walk into a store and you have your vision goggles on? Um, God, I can't believe I said that out loud. I kind of hate myself for saying it. <laughs> um, but what, what, are, you know, what, what does your digital commerce experience look like when you're in that sort of isolation Zen mode? right? The reality dial is turned down and you're in this isolated experience. Is that different to the way that your commerce experience is uh, presented when the reality dial is all the way up and you're, it's in a physical space that you happen to be in? Like, are those two different experiences from a shopping perspective? It's probably that, right? There's probably some like we have responsive web design. I think reality web design is probably something that's just around the corner, but I don't know that it's spatial because I don't know that we love spatial commerce for everything either. Yeah. Right. It is a, it is a limiting function to only be able to see what you're physically adjacent to. Right. Uh, being able to search and filter and quickly find things and speak those things out loud. It's really powerful. It right? is. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. I think it's more powerful even. There is a lot of, yeah, there's serendipity too in the real life. I don't know. I, I like dreaming about this stuff though. I'm glad we saved that to the back half of the show. Only the true fans of future commerce get that discourse. Everybody else gets a little <laughs> bit of jizz. All right. So uh, anything else, Brian? Oh man. I mean, we hit it all. I feel we like. We really did. <laughs> some. Uh, nothing left to stay. Suns, <laughs> nothing left to say. Stun silence. All right. Well, thank you for listening to this episode of Future Commerce. If you made it this far, God, congratulations. Uh, we will see you at Art Basel, December 6th through 8th. We are uh, coming back to Art Basel, our third year at Art Basel. We have a big event, the only retail and e-commerce centered event for leaders in the e-commerce and retail ecosystems. Uh, we are having three action-packed days. We've got workshops. We've got our brand new Muses journal. Uh, we've got our... Uh, an incredible collection of artists that have a strong tie into the story, this idea that brands create things that inspire us to create in response. The world is changing and uh, we are going to tell you just how it's changing at Muses, a new future commerce experience. It's at Art Basel, December 6th through 8th. Come in and join us and you can register, get on our Muses mail uh, so you can get our text messages and uh, our physical mail. We're going to drop something in the mail to you guys, uh, but we'd love to see you in person. You can get all of that at futurecommerce.com slash muses. And you can find more episodes of this podcast and all future commerce properties at futurecommerce.com. And uh, with that, That's thanks it. for listening. <laughs>